Well, this building yesterday was filled with human beings, the largest crowd that's ever been in it since it was opened, plus other rooms that were filled with closed circuit television. And we saw the wonderful power of the living Christ. Catherine Kuhlman was the first to be awarded an honorary doctorate from this university because we, we felt that the first one should go to someone in the Ministry of Healing, which is reflected in the background and founding and purpose of the university. And we wanted one we felt best exemplified in the now, what we believe to be the healing ministry of our Lord. And she consented at our earnest desire she and Dino to be with us this morning. She has to catch a flight shortly after chapel, unless the Lord would just, uh, 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 anyway, she has to catch a flight right after chapel. <clears throat> and we understand all those things, that she's riding with the Lord. And uh, I'm very envious this morning, though, and I want to confess that particular sin. I reserve the others to my private uh, devotions. <clears throat> the tremendous uh, hug and, and um, approbation and that Carlton got a minute ago uh, is just a little more than I could take, uh, uh, you know. Uh, Carlton, uh, we, we would like to look you over. We didn't think you were that great. Stand up again, uh, will you? Uh, I want you to see Carlton. Uh, uh, I assure you, though, we're going to have a lot more respect for you. But you can do better. D don't all remember that. <laughs> Without further ado, the one we love so much, and Jesus is called Dr. Catherine Kuhlman. And remember, they love you, and I love you, too. <laughs> oh, should I? Okay. All right, I'll do it. I don't know whether it'll help, but I'll do it. Is, it, is that good now? It's good. I don't need that. <laughs> oh, I tell you, you're a honey. I think you're cute. And that's a compliment. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. And now, dear Jesus, the presence of the Holy Spirit is so wonderful in this place of worship. We're here because we love you. There isn't one person in this assembly this morning who does not love you. I pray that you'll just speak to our hearts. Not one young person here has seen Catherine Kuhlman, not one. But please, we're so hungry. We're hungry for more. 
There is so much more. If only we knew how to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. You have so much for each of us if we only knew how to cooperate with the Holy Ghost. Teach us today for Jesus' sake. Amen. I shall try very hard to stay within the time limit. Oh. <laughs> I promise you because I know that, that you, you have to get back to classes. And I, 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 I'll do my best. But I want to talk to you just from my heart. Remember, I'm not bringing you a sermon this morning. Know that. And do not look upon me as a minister as I speak to you. You see... I can only give you my own personal experience. No one can give to anyone else any more than they've experienced themselves. Always remember that. And just in a very simple way, I'll give you my own personal experience regarding the Holy Spirit. My first, my very first, association with the Holy Spirit it was in a little Methodist church in Concordia, Missouri. If only you could know from whence I've come. Concordia, I don't think, is on the map. It's so small. Not more than 1,200 population. Mama was Methodist. Papa was Baptist. Neither one worked too hard at it. And one Sunday morning, and it says, real to me, this was my very first contact with the Holy Spirit. And I didn't realize it. One Sunday morning, sitting with Mama in that little Methodist church, I don't think the church holds any more than a hundred people. We were sitting there, It was time for the last song, and I was holding the old-fashioned Methodist hymnal. Whether anyone has ever been converted in that church before or since, I'll never know. But when the last song was being sung, and I was holding that old-fashioned Methodist hymnal in my hand, I was only 14 years of age. Something happened to me. I cannot tell you one word the preacher said and not one. But I only know that in that moment, the Holy Spirit came upon me. I did not recognize, I did not even know there was such a thing as the Holy Spirit. And I began to shake. I began to tremble. So much so I had to lay the hymnal down in the pew. And I knew I had to do something. I saw myself as I really was a sinner in the sight of God. And I did something. I laid that hymnal down and I did the only thing that I knew what to do. I'd seen them taking church members and I stepped forward and sat down in the first pew right in the corner and wept. This was my conversion. This was my first contact with the Holy Spirit. I began to weep, and I remember one of the old sisters came to me and brought me a handkerchief. She said, oh, Catherine, she says, don't cry. You and I both know that you've been such a good little girl. We both knew she was lying. <laughs> but in that moment, something happened to me. That was the new birth experience, and it was so real that I've never doubted it since. Never. 
I believe that when you're really born again, there's a definite place, there's a definite time, and you know it. And His Spirit, the Holy Spirit, will bear witness with your spirit that you pass from death unto life, and it's been that spiritual experience. It's been my new birth experience. It's been so real, but in that moment, I had my first contact with the Holy Ghost. It was later. It was, I was still in my teens in Joliet, Illinois. I can go to the place if it's still remaining. The second floor of a store building. But I had gone out to preach the gospel with more zeal than knowledge. And all I could preach, of course, was the new birth experience. It was all that I knew. I had read it the second floor of a store building in Joliet. I was preaching the best that I knew, salvation, it was all that I knew. And one night I had given an older call. There are those who came forward to be born again, but one lingered. Isabel Drake, I'll never forget. That young lady, a teacher, commuting from Joliet to Chicago. Everyone had gone. We turned out all the lights to save electricity, except just two were burning. She had remained there at the altar praying. I took my place by the side of her mother. There were not more than three or four of us left. When suddenly, this is as real as that moment it happened. In that moment, that one who knew absolutely nothing about the Holy Spirit, that one who knew absolutely nothing about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that one who had never heard anyone speak in an unknown tongue, never, looked up. She raised both hands up. And she began to sing. It was the most beautiful thing I have ever heard. Her voice was as clear as a bell. It was a language that was so beautiful and so wonderful. She reached high C. It was absolutely perfection. Before God, I've never heard such singing since. And her mother sitting there in the semi-darkness clasped my hand and she said, Catherine, that's not my daughter. My daughter can't even carry a tune. That's not my daughter. We sat there awed and the glory of the Lord was on that face. Perhaps for 15 minutes or more, the perfection of that voice and the perfection of the sound of that music. I was learning. I was seeing. The Holy Spirit I was witnessing something I had never known before. And then after 15 minutes or more, I cannot tell you how long, she bowed her head. 
I had seen one receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Remember something? I believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit with every atom of my being. He is with you. But there is an experience when he comes in and he fills that vessel of yours. Literally and always remember that when the Holy Spirit does it, it is absolute perfection. Know that. If you forget anything, if you forget everything that I say in this service this morning, God is perfect, absolute perfection. Jesus Christ is absolute perfection. Absolute perfection. When it comes to this mighty third person, the Trinity, he is absolute perfection. I'd give anything in the world if I could just bear my soul to you and get you to see something. Thing that is so thrilling. I believe in the baptism, the Holy Spirit, but beloved, when he speaks, it will be absolute perfection. It will not be babblings. A lot of things that are called the baptism, the Holy Spirit, a lot of things that's called speaking in an unknown tongue is not the Holy Spirit. It is a discredit to the one who is perfection. The Holy Spirit is not ignorant. When it's the Holy Spirit, it is a perfect language. We're living in a most important hour. We're living in an hour where we speak of the great charismatic movement. But we're living in a very dangerous hour also. Much that is attributed to the Holy Spirit is not the Holy Spirit. And it's this thing that's bringing much reproach on something that is very beautiful and very marvelous. And there are thousands who believe that just because they have uttered a few words in an unknown tongue that they have been filled with the Holy Spirit. There are thousands who are professing to have been filled with the Holy Spirit to have Receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit who have never been filled with the Holy Ghost, who've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You do not teach one how to speak in an unknown tongue. John the Baptist said, what something I indeed baptize you. But then there's one mightier than I. Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And everything we receive, I don't care what it is, and always remember this, 
everything that any one of us receives, it's still Jesus who gives it. Everything, I don't care what it is, everything that we receive must come through Jesus. He's the what? He's the one. He is even the giver of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Know that. I pray the Holy Spirit shall make this real to your heart in the sanctuary. Open hearts and open minds. My friends, it isn't the mechanics. Sometimes I think we turn to the mechanics. We get our minds so filled with the mechanics. We've lost sight of the truth. I saw the other day in Portland, Oregon, a little Catholic sister who knew absolutely nothing about the mechanics, nothing. She was from the monastery of the precious blood. She had never seen anyone filled with the Holy Spirit, never. <coughs> she was in a habit when the power of God was falling with healing the sick body since she came to the stage. And very timidly, she said, I've just been healed. And I said, oh, sister, that's wonderful. I'm so glad. And then she turned around to go. She took no more than about three steps. And then she turned again to me. And very timidly, she whispered, I'm so hungry. for more of the Holy Spirit. And in that moment, I did not touch her. I did not pray for her. In that moment, she was slain by the power of God, lying prostrate under the power of God. Before she ever hit the floor, No one had told her the mechanics. No one had taught her how. But Jesus, through the person of the Holy Spirit, was feeling her. A holy hush came over that ground. Remember something, noise is not the sign of power. Always know that. And in that moment, 5,000 hearts did beat as one, and all you could hear those people in that civic auditorium. A holy hush as the very angels did bend low. And that Catholic sister who had never been taught how, but it was the most natural thing in the world that she surrendered herself to him. And the Holy Spirit was feeling her and from those lips came a heavenly language it was beautiful so beautiful you felt like taking off the shoes from off your feet you were standing in the presence of the most high 
you recognize the perfection of the Holy Ghost. I received a divine revelation that I had never received before. And that's the reason my message to you this morning is so important. Because things are happening. Young people, things are happening. And they're happening so quickly. That's the reason I feel it's so important that you might understand that he might use you in these closing moments of this dispensation. I had said for a long time, and I believe it with every atom of my being, I believe, I remember something in this hour of great restoration, everything that happened in the early church is being restored to the church now. Everything. And it's happening so very quickly. It's happening so fast. I believe that this is the very last youth generation before the great tribulation. I believe that. I've got to believe it, knowing the word of prophecy as I do. This is the last youth generation before the great tribulation. Sitting here in this assembly this Monday morning, face it, face facts, face God, face reality, face truth. You young people sitting here are the last youth generation in this dispensation. I believe it and I'd stake my very life. What I'm talking to you, what we're saying to you is of vitally importance. And you've got to do something about it. You've got to do something about it. I believe this last hour all the fruits all the gifts of the spirit are being restored to the church there were miracle services with every person present it doesn't say how many were present in the service but all were healed by the power of God as that precious Catholic sister was being filled with the Holy Spirit and I stood there only a couple feet from her I was unaware of those out in the crowd, absolutely unaware. I received a spiritual revelation. Sometimes I wonder whether that was just for me. On the day of Pentecost, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. The hour is at hand, my friend when there will be times, even as a moment such as this, when there will be such oneness in the Spirit, when the Holy Ghost will come upon those in the assembly, those who know absolutely nothing about the Holy Spirit, Great waves of glory will come upon them and every person present will be filled with the Holy Spirit and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I believe that. I want you to see something that's vitally important. As many as are led of the Spirit. I'll just bear my soul to you. When one is led, it means that one follows. You see? 
say to me? Catherine Kuhlman, how do you know? And remember something. I do not believe that God has given me something special. Young people, as God is my judge, I tell you what I really believe. God has not given to me one thing that he'll not give to any one of you young people in this place if you pay the price. I'm not special to him. There is a one thing that he's done for me that he'll not do for you. There isn't a young man, there isn't a young woman in this assembly this morning. But what God will use you in exactly the same way, he'll give to you absolutely everything that he's given to me. You'll pay the price. I would lie if I would to tell you the price is cheap. Everybody's out for a bargain these days, but God has no bargains. Young people, I would lie to you. If I were to tell you that it comes cheap, You see me walk out of there on stage, and all you see is the glamour of it. And it looks so glamorous. There's a price, and it depends on what you want most. Just face facts. We're living in a generation where this generation doesn't want to face facts. I'm talking to young people who do not want to face facts. Sometimes I think it's the hardest thing in the world to get young people these days to face facts. But when you're dealing with the spiritual, it's the most important thing in the world. And you've got to face the truth and face facts. When you walk out on that stage, I know what David meant when he said, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. I probably know better than anyone else in this place what he meant and how he felt when he cried out, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. I'm not afraid of Satan. I can use the same weapon on Satan that Jesus used. It is written. I can face Satan. I can face all the forces of hell and use the same weapon on him that Jesus did. I fear no man. But one fear. Lest I grieve the Holy Spirit. Lest this anointing shall leave. You don't know. Young people, you don't know. In this ministry, you only see the glamour. In this ministry, yesterday, the thousands in this arena only saw the miracles. And they saw the glory. But very few of them could see the price that was paid 
before those miracles took place. not of thy Holy Spirit from me. He can take everything that I've got. He can strip me of everything I've got. Leave in me but the clothing to cover my body. Leave in me but the shoes on my feet. And I'm willing to go out there and live on bread and water the rest of my life. So help me God. I'll preach it if I have to preach it from the street corner. But take not thy Holy Spirit from me. If I knew the Holy Spirit had been grieved, I would never, if I knew the Holy Ghost had departed from me, I would never again walk out on the stage. I would never go through the fall. I would never make a pretense of the thing. For in that hour, I would be the most ordinary person that ever lived. And nothing would happen. You can say the same words. You can go through the same form. You can do the same thing. But the secret of power is the Holy Ghost. to this very hour so far as advantages millions can envy you you're probably the envy of more young people than you can possibly realize but there's still something more it's more than the teaching It's something that's personal. Sitting there. I'll ask one question. What do you want most in life? That has to come first. Face yourself. Look yourself directly in the face. Maybe you don't desire what I've been talking about. Maybe that isn't your desire at all. Maybe it isn't. There are other things in life that you want more. That you feel are more desirable. If I had anything less than I had, I couldn't live. I wouldn't want to live. That fellowship that Paul was talking about in that communion with the Holy Spirit, I couldn't live without it. I couldn't. I couldn't. Everything else is so worthless. Nothing else really matters. But maybe you don't want it. 
Maybe you don't want the best that God has for you. But there are other things that are more important to you. But oh, when once you taste it, when once you've experienced it, when once you've known what it was like to have the Holy Spirit take your body You ask me why I am not weary in body after five hours. Why I am as refreshed as though I'd had five hours of rest. It's because Catherine Kuhlman hasn't done it. there and I've watched the Holy Ghost do it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I have been a great spectator, really. It's been my privilege to be a spectator to see what the Holy Spirit is doing. <laughs> I've stood there. I've watched him empty wheelchairs. And I'm thrilled for that person. Over here, I'm thrilled when I see him as he's opened that ear. Why shouldn't I be refreshed? I'm not doing it. I have nothing to do with it whatsoever. Catherine Kuhlman hasn't entered into the picture. When we do it, we fall apart. It's hard work when we do it without the Holy Spirit. <coughs> and the thing is, he doesn't ask for golden vessels. And he doesn't ask for silver vessels. That's the glory of it. He just asks for yielded vessels. <coughs> I have no talent. I was born without anything. <coughs> I have no talent, nothing. That's the reason probably it was easy for me to say, take nothing and use it. For some of you, it may be a little harder. A little harder to die on that cross. That cross is there. Without exception, you're faced with a cross. Your cross. What are you going to do about it? When you face that cross, remember, is what you want most. I can't make that decision for you. I made my own decision. I made it. I made my decision. I made it. And I'm glad that I made it. It may look so hard to you just now. It costs much. But what do you want most? the question. Anything else is temporary. But what I'm talking about is eternal. 
I want you to do something. I want every one of you young people. You've got to face it. You've got to face it. I have to face it. Who will say, Catherine Coomer? I'm willing to pay that price. Think it. Think it over. This is before God. So often, you know, we sing it, I surrender, until it has almost become a cliche. Sometimes we go through so much ceremony that it doesn't mean a thing. Death is serious. Death. Death. We don't like to face death. I want every young person before God remember he has not given me one thing that he won't give you, if you're willing to die to self. I want you to do something. Be dead honest before God. But also remember there are young people to whom I'm talking to this Monday morning chapel. If he can take a young Bolivian, a 20-year-old Bolivian, and take that young Bolivian eight months ago who never had the privileges of an ORU, a young Bolivian who knew absolutely nothing about the new birth experience, a young Bolivian who knew nothing about the Holy Ghost. A young Bolivian who never had the privileges of the teaching of the word that you young people have this morning. If he can take a young Bolivian who came to the United States and registered as a pre-med student and take that young Bolivian and in one of the services was born again. A month later, standing on a folding chair, preaching to the overflow crowd on the outside. And while he was telling this crowd in broken English that which had happened to him a month before his wonderful salvation, if the Holy Ghost will take a young Bolivian and give him the gift of healing as he was standing on that folding chair and sent him back again to Bolivia and three months later the president of Bolivia was born again and the wife of the president of Bolivia was healed by the power of the Holy Ghost and he is now preaching to over 70,000 people at a time. If God will do that with a 20-year-old Bolivian sitting there this moment, little do you know what God will do for you if you'll face that cross and die to self. All right, face it. I want every young man and every young woman in this place who'll say, I'm willing to face my cross and die on it. For more than anything else, I want the Holy Ghost to use me. I want that more than life itself. I want you to come down here and stand here and I'm going to pray for you. are bending low. 
The angels are bending low. The angels are bending low. All of heaven is bending low. God the Father is pleased. Jesus is so pleased. Jesus is so pleased. The Holy Spirit is so pleased. The Holy Spirit is so pleased. My Lord and my God, you can literally take these young people this morning and you can shake the world for God. There are enough young people here who literally, literally, literally can shake this world for God. These lives that are completely surrendered to you. Listen, young people, you've had consecration services before, but this has got to be different. This has got to be different. We're talking now about death. Well, you can say, Lord, anything, anything. Anything, anything. This is yours. 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 This is yours, body, soul, and spirit. This is yours. This is yours. This is yours, this is yours, this is yours, this is yours, this is yours. This is yours, this is yours. There's a death today. There's a death today. There's a death today, my Lord. There's a death today. Many a grave has been opened. Many a grave is being opened right now. There's a death just now. It costs much. But, oh, God, it's worth the price. Dear God, it's worth the price. My God, I tell you, it's worth the price. I tell you, young people, it's worth the price. I wouldn't lie to you. I was God is my judge. I wouldn't lie to you. I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. It's worth the price, I tell you the truth. I would not deceive you. 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 I tell you the truth. I would not deceive you. I would not deceive you. Oh, I would not deceive you. I would not deceive you. I would not deceive you. I tell you the truth. Take me, Lord, all of me. 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 And the Holy Spirit is searching hearts right now. Just surrender, just yield. Just surrender, just surrender. Little do you know what God will do for you. Little do you know what God will do for you. Little do you know. Little do you know what God will do for you if you'll only surrender. I want to be used of you. More than anything else in the world. I surrender everything to you. Do you really mean it? 
Do you really mean it? More than anything else in the whole world. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. He won't take second place. He refuses. He will not take second place. I promise you. I promise you he'll not take second place. I promise you. I promise you. You can't compromise with him. You can't compromise with him. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. You can't, you can't, you can't. He won't accept a compromise. He won't accept a compromise. I promise you he won't accept a compromise. He won't. He just won't accept a compromise. Oh, tell him. Tell him just now. I surrender all. Oh, you know it so well. You know it so well. I surrender. And you may have sung it a thousand times, but this morning it's different. With both hands uplifted, sing it. I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my I surrender. Is a token of surrender. I surrender. I do, Lord. I do. I dig the grave right now. I die this moment. the Holy Spirit. Worship him just now. And there was the sound of a mighty rushing wind. The sound of a mighty rushing wind. Somehow we hear the sound of that same mighty rushing wind. I heard, and John said, I heard hallelujah, sing it, sing it, hallelujah. the very 
person and presence of the Holy Spirit. This moment. Give that one a divine revelation. There shall be a consecration. There shall be that death. some of self and some of we. But in this moment we shall say none of self. None of self. But all I think the Holy Spirit is saying these words, it is not I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. Amen. That's what she said to me this morning. My own death and letting the Holy Spirit do it all so that it is not I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. And she was saying that every one of us has to be led by the Spirit in the way he wants us led. Not to be her or me or someone else, but to be your own identity in your own field not living in yourself, but Christ living in you. And, you. and you're letting the Holy Spirit do it. You're doing it. The, only as the Spirit does it. I felt in my heart that should the Lord direct Catherine Kuhlman to come and visit us, that he would speak to us. Do you felt like do you feel like the Spirit has said something to your heart? And what we tried to do, what Catherine tries to do, I see her trying to do it, and I know I try to do it. Uh, and what I try to do, and what she's trying to do is, we're trying to get people's minds off of us 
so that we can merely be an instrument and, and nothing else because we know we're nothing else. You know, people like to praise people more than they like to praise God. They'd rather give you credit for something or give me credit for something than to give Jesus credit for it. And you've heard me say so many times, I'd like to take credit being a human, but there's nobody can take credit for building this school but the Holy Spirit. And nobody can take credit for what you're doing but the Holy Spirit. And I thought, now, Lord, through our professors, our instructors, our staff, and our students, as we really get with our subjects, our courses, as we really get with it and let the Spirit move through us and do it through us as we cooperate with him, then we will produce something that will touch the world. But above all, the Spirit will do it through you as an individual and then do it with us all. We'll become a body. I had the athletes heavy on my heart this morning. Our athletes are out in front to the extent that they're seen by more people. You see the difference? They're seen as a team by more people. And I want everybody filled with the Spirit, but I had such a burden that every athlete and that whole department would be baptized in the Spirit. As Catherine said, not merely, not merely the speaking in tongues. That's a means to an end. That's a means to an end. That's not an end in itself. I hope you heard what she said, but to be filled with the Spirit. And Catherine, God bless you this morning. God bless you. And we'll pray for you. And we'll pray that you'll come back. Pray that you'll come back. We'll pray for your ministry. The healing ministry is the, is the ministry that'll touch more people, that'll break their hearts, that'll get them converted, that'll bring them miracles. The healing ministry is the ministry of Jesus. You read your New Testament, and that's all you're going to see is the Holy Spirit using Jesus to heal the people. I know the church has got away from it, and they're starting back. <laughs> they're starting back. We don't have to argue with anybody. That's not our argument. The Holy Spirit doesn't need us to defend him. No, we'll just do what God calls us to do. We'll leave it with him. <laughs> Catherine, where are you? You go to the airport? I see a hand. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Richard, would you like to come and say a word this morning? No words. Uh, well, uh, it, it's, it's much easier to feel than to say anything this morning. I had this guidance that is, when we do leave this building in a little while, if we leave it, uh, and it might not be well, it might not be well to talk a lot to each other about this meeting, but to talk to Jesus. And as you go about your studies, put something into them you've never put into them. That's the discipline she was talking about, the discipline. She was talking about that. And talk to Jesus. You, you know, you, you talk to him without any words. You talk to him inside. Talk to him. It's be, be easy to, to, to discuss. And, and, uh, but I think the hardest thing to do is just talk to Jesus. And she said that everything worthwhile costs something. You don't get something for nothing. As I say, it's easy to talk with one another right now, but I think it's harder just to talk to Jesus, and I think maybe that's a good word to us today, just to, as we do what we're supposed to do today in our studies and so forth, just talk to the man. Tell him about yourself, that commitment to Christ. Break off any sin in your life. Stand up and break it off to her, or to him, or to anything, or to anybody. Just break it off. Just break off sin. Break it off. And say, Jesus, I died today. 
but I'm the new man and the new woman in Christ. I think that's what she's trying to say to us. She, she didn't intend to leave us dead. But you can't be raised up until you do die. We become the new man in Christ. Where's Catherine? Are you, over, are you going to come this way? Are you going to the airport? What? You better go. Yeah. Well, so we've just got Jesus then. And isn't that more important than Oral or Catherine or anybody in the world? Take your, take your time about eating so we will not swamp the dining room. Maybe somebody won't even eat this meal. Maybe they will. And I mean by that nobody tells you what to do on that. The, your inner man speaks to you in the spirit whether you should eat the meal or not. And if you don't eat it, don't tell anybody. Whenever you do without a meal, you don't broadcast it. You don't tell it. You wash your face and you look bright. Someone asked me how long I had fasted and I started the ministry and I told them I would never tell that to anybody that the Lord would take away my blessing. You never tell it. Let it alone. Do it unto Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 What was the spirit through Catherine saying to you? It was just telling me that it's time for me not to be concerned about what other people think when the Lord directs me to do something. I'm supposed to just go on and do it and give him the glory for it. Kathy, what were you saying to you? Just to keep my eyes on the sun and it'll, my life will be bright and he'll be... The only thing I want in this whole world, President Roberts, is to be used for his glory. And too many things get in my way, and I just have to claim it and, and tell the devil to go to hell, because Christ wants to use me. Well, while she was talking, I was thinking about the many things that I do and that are important for me to do. I thought the Lord would give me wisdom and courage that I've never had before. Do you feel that way about your studies or things that you're doing? Yes, <laughs> in every aspect of my life. Definitely, because right now it's very hard for us, but I think if the Lord is just showing us, He's going to help us. Yes. I think one of the tendencies this morning is to run from our books and run out to the end of the earth. I think that that would break Catherine's heart. Because she wasn't talking about physically running or getting on a plane and going somewhere. She's talking about right here where it's the hardest. It's the hardest to be a Christian right here for you than it is anywhere in the world. It's the hardest because you've got to live with one another. You've got to face your studies and they're not easy. If they were easy, you better run from them. You don't want anything easy. You can do better. You don't want anything easy. And if it's hard to stay here, then that's what you do. Nothing is easy. Your cross. Now we all said we would die this morning and it's easier said than done. And our death will be a death as long as we live. Paul said, I die daily. You don't get it all done in one day. Cause maybe in the morning you'll wake up so discouraged that you'll forget this whole service. So you've got to die again in the morning. 
and rise again in the morning and face what you have to face. That's mine for the Lord. I claim it for the Lord. I thought about the beauty and the wisdom of God. I put it all together. He made us put in a strong curriculum and a strong academic program. I guess he knew the devil would laugh at us if we didn't. But we're respected for it. People respect us. They respect you and me in this place. Because it's hard and tough here and they know it. It'd been easy for us to just dress any old way we want to dress. Dress like a bunch of bums. And people come here and say, yeah, a bunch of bums. They come here and they look at you. And they look at me. They look at the professors. They stand a little taller and they say, I wish I had the guts to do that. Everywhere I go, the professors tell me I wish our school would do this. Young people all over America that we couldn't take this fall. We didn't have any room in the dorms. They almost got broken up and their parents would call me day and call me at midnight. They'd call our chairman, they'd call our board members and say, what can you do? We couldn't do anything. I'll tell you, we're on the right track. We're on the, with all our faults, we're on our, the right track. And I'd like to see the strength of God. You who are making D's to make C's. You're making C's to make B's, and you've been making B's to make A's. And you athletes who have been given a half or three-fourths, you give 150%. And you, you that are in the various disciplines, the drama, the music, the, uh, well, the humanities. And I hear how hard it is. Well, thank God it's hard. Because God is not going to let you shrink your mind up to nothing and be nothing. He wants your mind to stretch. And I told him the other day how hard my work was. And while she is preaching, he is whispering to me, I'm telling her to tell you, Oral, if it's easy. I didn't get a lot of folks to do it. So he was fixing me up this morning. So I'm ready to tackle. I've been worried to death over the new worship center, how we're going to get the money to build it and all that. I was just looking at the wrong source. And we're going to build it. And we're going to do a lot of other things around here that we ought to be doing. Because it's hard. The easy stuff goes out the window. Are you with me? easy stuff goes out the window sure it's easy it's easy to touch a girl or a, a, a girl to touch a boy and let down our morals sure it's easy it's tough to say you won't touch my body until the night I'm married that's hard I went through it I went through every day of it and every night of it it's hard and the Bible tells you it's not hard he doesn't know much about it. And she doesn't know much about it. It's hard. But thank God, we died today. And we rose again. Thank you, Jesus. Can you praise him with me? Thank you, Jesus. 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 I get a feeling it'll be very hard for you to go back to class today. That's why I want you to go, because it's hard. Hallelujah. So just go. And the Lord goes with you. Try not to talk so much among yourselves. Just talk to Jesus as you go. Okay?